Man, what's wrong? My plantar fasciitis is killing me. It's just horrible. Man, you know this isn't how we fix plantar fascia pain. Let me show you how. Get up and get down, get up and get down. Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm joined by Graham Tuttle, the barefoot sprinter, and we're gonna talk about one of the most common problems with running, which is plantar fascia pain. Now, here's the thing that most people need to understand. Plantar fascia pain is not an inflammatory problem. And I know that may have just blown some of your minds, but it's actually an issue of tissue death. Here's why. So what you realize is that most people run around in stuff like this, right? You get a raised heel box, raised heel shoe. It's very thick on the bottom. It's got a toe spring and curves up. It doesn't bend that much. It's supposed to cushion everything, but what it ends up doing is acting like a cast. It keeps your foot from moving. Whereas something like this, which is very minimal support, allows your foot to move. But the thing is, we're born without shoes, so our bodies and our feet are meant to move and to be able to absorb. And what happens when that doesn't, when we don't get the capacity to move, we get stiff, we start losing circulation, and then everything gets weak. And then that means we end up in pain. So let me tell you a little bit about how this pain develops. So Graham, take a f uh, seat for me. Now in 2003, a doctor by the name of Harvey Lamont, who was a trained podiatrist who also did fasciotomy surgeries, actually went in and took biopsies on 50 of his patients right in this area who developed a lot of this plantar fascia pain. It usually happens on the inside part of the heel. Well, he took the biopsies and looked at what he found under microscopes, assuming he's gonna see signs of inflammation. But what he found astounded the entire podiatry world. He found no signs of inflammation. In fact, what he found was tissue death. Now, here's how this happens. A lot of people wear shoes like this that are raised in the heel and raised in the toe. This uh, basically puts the foot into a really bad position that stretches out the entire bottom part of the foot. So we're raising right here and elevating the heel. We've got a lot of stretch on the plantar fascia. And then also we have narrow toe boxes, which is going to then not only elevate the foot, but smash the big toe in like that. Now, how does this relate to plantar fascia pain? Well, there's a small blood vessel called your lateral plantar artery, which is a branch off some of the bigger arteries of the lower leg. And the lateral plantar artery branches off and runs right underneath here and supplies the plantar fascia area. Now, what happens is that when the foot is held for an extended period of time in an elevated and adducted position, a muscle called your abductor hallucis is pulled tight against the side. You can actually see it move when I pull his toe into that uh, shoe position. And when it is pulled tight, the lateral plantar artery is actually pinched off and blood supply is limited to the bottom of the foot. Now, in some people, that actually, the body will compensate and send more blood to the area. So they live their entire lives wearing shoes like this and they never find the problem. But that doesn't happen for everyone. In some people, the blood supply is limited down into that area for such a long time that all these tissues in this localized area begin to slowly die off. And that is what actually creates the plantar fascia pain. It is not an issue in inflammation. It is a positional problem because of the shoes that we wear that elevate the heel and the toe, pull the big toe into an adductor position, into the hallux valgus or bunion position, which then shuts off blood supply to the bottom part of the foot, which leads to the cell death and the eventual pain. First thing you get up in the morning, you take that step, it feels like a knife's being jammed right into the bottom of your foot. That's the plantar fascia pain. It's not due to inflammation. So what do we do to fix it? Well, first we need to get rid of these horrible shoes, but here's three steps that you can take to start off. We're actually gonna restore some blood flow to the bottom of the foot. So stand on up for me, Graham. I want you to stand and just roll on something like this. Now, we're using a nice little double roll peanut right now, but what you can do at home is a golf ball, a tennis ball, a cross ball, something hard and just roll the bottom of your foot. <clears throat> and that's gonna help bring blood flow and circulation back to that area. It's gonna be a little painful at first, especially if you've been having a lot of intense plantar fascia type pain, but don't worry about it. It's gonna feel a little bit better once you're done. You can do this multiple times throughout the day. And two things. One, I think this is the uh, the uh, toe spacer infinity ball if yes. you're interested in brands. Mm -hmm. But one thing I found that helps a lot is understand that your toes are moving as well. So when you roll, get those toes to move, extend them, flex them, it'll change those positions. So if you roll and open up, the other thing is get on the inside of that foot and the outside of the foot. When you get something like this, it's got a curve. It is not just the middle. 
You also wanna get the lateral longitudinal arch and the medial longitudinal arch and then get those toes to move at, like in, in conjunction with the foot. Yeah. All right, step two, once we're done with that, we need to help this big toe spread back out. Cause remember your toes are being held often in this small shut off space because of the narrow toe box, which then again, shuts off the blood supply over here. So we need to get this toe to spread out. So what do we do? We're just gonna do a little self soft tissue massage on the inside part of this big toe. Your adductor hollicis muscle is often being held in a shortened position. So it's gonna be a little tender. There's gonna be some trigger points down there. So smash into it and then pull your big toe out to the side, a little soft tissue stretch. That can be really helpful. Again, you can play around with it. There's no set rep scheme, but basically get some soft tissue work done for about a minute or so in that area. And then I wanna also stretch the tops out of your foot. Here's the deal. Remember, the plantar fascia is already being stretched to a great degree because you're in an elevated heel and the big toe is being elevated here. So this muscle in uh, fascial system is already being lengthened. Why do I want to stretch it even more? So stretching the bottom of your foot is not how we fix plantar fascia pain. Let's actually restore the balance in the tendons um, that we see that develops because of the poor footwear we use. So we actually want to get some extensor stretching like this. So pull your toes under. You can feel a good stretch along the lines right there. This is going to be an excellent next step for anyone dealing with that plantar fascia pain. And as you start to feel better and you want to progress this, we want to start to go through that same thing. So you get circulation, you get the big toe to move, and you get the extensors lengthened. So this is where you look at something like a short foot exercise. You're going to grab the ground, engage with those toes, and basically like you're trying to squeeze. If I'm trying to grab something, I grab with the fingers, and in this case it'd be here. I grab and I squeeze. I want to grab and engage that. So I'm trying to basically lift up underneath. If you really do this well, you'll be able to, you would be able to slide a pen or a pencil all the way underneath, but I'm engaging all the toes. I'm gripping and I'm lifting up. And you'll see all these things as a slight external rotation as I lift and engage this and the whole body is working. That's first. It's called the short foot exercise. You're doing it from 20 to 30 reps as you feel this engage and be intentional about this. Then the next thing you want to start to think about is getting that big toe to integrate. Now you can do this by simply standing up. Once you have the capacity to get to a big toe thumbs up, so that's where you flex the toes and you extend the big toe and you can move these separately. Then you want to take that and you pull across. So there's a lateral stretch on the big toe. So big toe lateral abduction, adduction stretch. So I'm pulling and I'm resisting. I'm pulling and I'm resisting. And you see, I'm trying to create some space there. You can generally go there and work on that. And you can resist it and pull back up, resist it stretching out and pull back up and engage that. That's gonna get that big toe to integrate separately. And then finally, we can progress that extensor. So I'm going on the top of my foot, and I'm stretching, I'm putting those toes down and I'm extending. Good. I want to get this ankle to extend. So I'm trying to point and get a straight line along the shin. This is gonna work here and you can start to rotate, you can move, you can really put some load into that. And you can even stand on it, but that's a long-term goal. But this is something you wanna get that full extensor complex, everything from the ankle, the top of the foot to the top of the toes to be back in alignment. Now these are progressions you do as you start to get more advanced and feel better, but this is part of the process of getting back to running and being able to move smoothly. There you go. So guys, again, the big message of the story is that plantar fasciitis, I-T-I-S, means that there's inflammation there. But what do we know? There's really not. So the correct terminology is actually plantar fasciopathy. And this changes our approach to understanding what we need to do. It is more so due to the shoes that you're wearing that hold your foot into a bad position. So let's ditch these shoes that elevate the heel and the toes and are super narrow. Let's restore natural foot mechanics, appearance, and get our healthy feet back. Now, anything else to say on this topic? Your feet are not meant to be in pain. That's the most important thing we can encourage you on, is that if your feet at any point in human history were in pain, you wouldn't be able to run, jump, walk. So your feet are really, really strong and resilient. They will bounce back given the right stimulus, the right movement, and the right support. That may mean some lifestyle changes, it may mean some footwear changes, and it may mean a little bit of attention to that. If you need help, if I may plug my program, I do have a short 28-day program that walks people through this, but we do want to encourage you that your feet are not meant to be in pain, you are not broken, you can get them back. So. With the right knowledge and information, you're well on your way. There we go. It's all about giving you the right knowledge so you can digest it, become empowered to take control of your body. That's what we're here to do. Now, before you guys are done, watch this video, then go head on over to Graham's YouTube channel, The Barefoot Sprinter. Give him a subscribe because he's got a lot of great information and a lot more for us to come. Uh, until next time, guys, happy squatting. They say that. Energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching? So caught up in their egos, these people have.